Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am kicking off my Back to Basics series. This is going to be a series of videos focusing on specific products and techniques. There will be lots of how-to videos with demonstrations and I just want to be able to help you do the best you can with your makeup. Now, I am not an expert by any means. Everything I've learned has been from watching YouTube videos, reading blogs and just practicing on myself. So with that being said, I am starting off this series with my must have products for your makeup kit and everything I'm mentioning today is from the drugstore or the affordable price range. I feel like YouTube and Instagram these days has made it feel like you need every damn product that is released. And you know what? You don't. Just having some staple products in your collection will get you far and then if you really enjoy playing with makeup, you can go ahead and buy these new pretty shiny things that are coming out. If you're excited for this series, then give this video a thumbs up and if you have any requests or topics you would like me to discuss, then just leave me your comment down below. The first thing I want to talk about is primer and you know what? It's not a must have. Let's just start there. It is personal preference and depends a lot on what kind of skin type you have. For example, if you have dry skin and just need some extra moisture, you can go in with a hydrating primer. But if you have oily skin and you find that your oils come through and your makeup breaks up throughout the day, then you could go in with a mattifying primer to combat that issue. I personally have a lot of redness, so I like to go in with an anti-redness primer. The green color corrects the redness, giving me a more even skin tone and therefore I don't have to go in with layers and layers of foundation to try and cover it up. If you have large pores and you find your makeup settles into these, then you can go in with a pore filling primer and that's going to solve that. So as you can see, it depends on what skin type you have and what issue you're having to decide what kind of primer you're going to need, if any at all. I'll quickly run you through some of my favorites now. So if you're after a hydrating primer, then the Maybelline Master Prime is really great. If you're wanting to mattify your skin, then I recommend the L'Oreal Infallible Mattifying Primer. Another one by L'Oreal, which is one of my favorites, is the Infallible Anti-Redness Primer. For a pore filling primer, Astralis has one called See You Later Pores, and this is similar to the Benefit Pore Fessional. And then if you're after a glowy primer that just adds a nice sheen to the skin, I recommend the L'Oreal Glow Cherie Natural Glow Enhancer or the designer brand's Rise and Prime Luminescent Primer. Next is foundation, and depending on your skin type, they can perform differently on everyone. Great to hear, I know. I've always been a full coverage kind of girl, so here are my recommendations for a medium to full coverage foundation. First up is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. They also have a dewy and smooth range as well. So if you've got oily skin, the Matte and Poreless will be good for you. And if you've got really dry skin, the dewy and smooth formula would work for you. I use the shade 110 Porcelain. There are actually 40 shades in this range, and there is even a lighter one than this. So a great option if you've got super fair skin. Next is the L'Oreal True Match. This one also comes in a range of 40 shades. I use the shade 0.5N. This is more of a medium to full buildable coverage. It has a really nice natural matte finish and it just looks really beautiful on the skin, not too heavy. If you're after something a bit more full coverage, then I would recommend the Maybelline Superstay Foundation. Now I have the shade 03 True Ivory. This is the lighter shade available here in Australia and unfortunately it is too dark for me. You can get lighter shades from the US range but you do have to buy them on eBay. This is a super full coverage foundation. It is so long lasting and one of my go-tos if I need my foundation to stay in place all day. Now to combat the shade issue, what I recommend doing is buying some lightning drops. So these ones here are the Astralis Shade Adjusting Lightning Drops and all I do is add two drops into this foundation on a palette, mix it in and voila, the foundation has lightened up enough, it now matches me. If you are super fair like me, I highly recommend getting some lightning drops in your collection. And then another full coverage foundation is the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Now this is a really matte formula. So if you've got dry skin, you probably won't like this one. This shade range is also huge and the options for fair skin, there are just so many. 
I have the shade Light Porcelain and I find this one to be the best match out of the range. I really like using that foundation for mixing as well. So if I have a foundation that's too dark, I can add a pump in. Or if I want a bit more coverage to a foundation, I can add a pump in. You can always mix and match your foundations. It can seem a little bit weird at first, but if you love something about one foundation and something else about the other, just mix them together. Next is concealer, and I like to have at least two different shades. One that matches my skin tone, so I can use it to cover up blemishes, or use it under my eyes when I don't want that super bright look. And then I want a shade that's a little bit lighter than my skin tone, to use it to really brighten under the eyes when I'm going for a more glam look. For more of a medium coverage, I love the Maybelline Fit Me in the shade 05 Ivory. This has a really nice natural finish and it's good for covering up blemishes, but I can also use it under my eyes. If you're after something super full coverage, I recommend the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. I have the shade Ivory 322 and this one matches my skin tone. So again, really good for covering up blemishes or using under my eyes when I don't want that super bright look. And then when I do want to go full glam with high coverage and really bright under eyes, the e.l.f. Camo Concealer in the shade Fair Beige is a winner. Both this and the L'Oreal Concealer do have a matte finish, but it's nothing that is too drying. It looks really nice under the eyes and just gives amazing coverage. By the way, I do have a lot of individual reviews on the products that I am mentioning, so I will link them all down below, or you can go into your YouTube search bar, type in my name and the product, and the review should come up. Next is powder, and this is used to set your liquid products in place so your makeup doesn't move around throughout the day. Now, I'm not a real expert in powder, and I don't branch out a lot. I found a few that I love and I just stick to them. So one that I love for setting under my eyes and my face is the Models Prefer Mineral Finishing Veil Powder. Now this is a loose powder and it does have a slight tint of color, but it is so fair and just works amazingly on my fair skin tone. It's not super matte, it does leave a little bit of a glow to the skin, which I really love as well. The next product is really good if you just want to lightly set your makeup. So you're not wearing anything too heavy, but you just need a little bit of powder to set it in place. This is the Rimmel Insta Fix and Matte, and I've actually just broken the last of mine. But this is what it looks like. It's a completely translucent powder, so it is white, and it's not going to leave any color on your skin. And then if you want a powder with a little bit more coverage, then I would recommend the Rimmel Stay Matte Long Lasting Press Powder. And this is in the shade 001 Transparent. When I use this, I like to go in with a nice big fluffy powder brush and it just sets everything in place without looking too heavy or cakey. Both the Rimmel powders are matte formulas, so they're not going to give you that sheen like the models prefer one does. If there are any affordable drugstore powders that you absolutely love, leave them in the comments below for everyone to have a read of, and I would also love some recommendations to try out some new powders. Next is brows, and depending on what kind of brows you have, depends on what products you need. For example, if you have super full bushy brows, you may only want to use a brow gel to brush them up and set them in place. Or if you have super sparse brows like me, then, well, you need it all. There are heaps of products to choose from, including pomades, powders, and pencils. Personally, I like to start out with a tinted brow gel. Because my brows are blonde, this just tints all the hairs I have and gives me more of a stencil to work with. So using the brow gel gives me a better outline and then I can go in with a pencil or a powder and fill in the sparse areas and just fix up the shape. Some gels I really love are the Designer Brands Brow Power Tinted Brow Gel. As I mentioned, this one is really good at tinting the blonde hairs, so I have more of an outline to work with. And then when it comes to setting the brows in place, I love the Essence Make Me Brow. This has a really tiny wand, which I love. You can be super precise. And the fibers in this grab onto any hairs that you have and just makes them look a lot more full and bushy, which I freaking need. It also tints any of those remaining blonde hairs I may have missed and it sets my brows in place. And then brow pencils are my go-to at the moment. The ones I'm loving are the NYX Micro Brow Pencil in the shade Taupe. This has a really, really tiny fine tip, 
so you can be really precise and draw in those little hair-like strokes. And then one that I love if I need a quick application is the Maybelline Brow Temptation in the shade Blonde. This has more of a bigger pencil and the shape of it just makes it really easy to quickly outline the brow and fill in those sparse areas. Next is bronzer and I used to be so scared of bronzer when I first started doing my makeup but now I don't go a day without it. It just adds some dimension and color back to the face which is much needed when you're as fair as me. Now of course I'm going to be talking about bronzers from a fair skin perspective. So a lot of them at the drugstore can actually be a bit too warm, therefore looking orange on my skin tone and not giving me that bronze effect that I'm after. So I like to look for a bronzer with a bit more of a cool undertone. Nothing too grey because then we're stepping into contouring territory. But I'll show you a difference between some bronzers so you understand what I mean. So this here is the Maybelline Master Bronze Kit. These two shades here are the kind of bronzing shades I would go for. This one is quite cool, but it would definitely work for my skin tone. This one here is an example of a shade that I would not use. As you can see, it's a lot warmer and looks quite orange compared to these two shades. Some of my favorite bronzers include the L'Oreal Back to Bronze. This one is a little warmer than the other, but it works perfectly for fair skin and just gives that really nice glowy bronze look. It's a very soft and buttery formula, so it blends it really easily into the skin. And like all the bronzers I'm going to mention, it's very buildable. So you just start off with a light application and build it up until you get the bronzed look that you're after. Next is the Maybelline City Color Bronzer, and I have the shade Light Cool. This range is actually really good because there are six shades and they all have different undertones. So it makes it really easy to find a shade that is going to work for you. This is a very light and subtle bronzer. It's a matte formula, really good for day-to-day -day wear or if you're new to bronzing, this isn't going to be too intimidating for you. It builds really well and it's not too harsh on the skin and it won't look muddy if you apply too much. And then one that's quite new to my collection is the designer brand's Get Glowing Bronzer. This is in the shade Barcelona Bronze, and as you can see, it has a very cool undertone. So this is a matte formula. I'm actually wearing it today, and I think it just works so well for fair skin. There's that perfect balance in the shade where it's cool, but it's still warm enough to bronze you up. It's just an amazing formula, and I have not put it down since I got it. Next is blush, and this is another product that I cannot skip in my routine. I've noticed on people with more of a medium skin tone, they can get away with skipping blush because it's not necessary for them to add that flush of color back to their skin. Whereas someone like me who is super fair, once I apply my foundation, I am a complete white blank canvas and I need to add that color and life back to my skin. For me, I prefer something with more of a rosy coral undertone, nothing too peach and nothing too bright or baby pink. One of my absolute favorites is the Maybelline Fit Me blush in the shade Coral, and this blush is my go-to. Now this does have a slight sheen to it, so if you have a lot of texture on your cheeks, it is going to show that. But if you don't, it just leaves a really beautiful glow to the skin that looks really natural and fresh. This blush isn't very pigmented, which I love. There is nothing worse than on a fair skin tone going in with too much blush. You panic trying to blend that out. So with this, you can just go in and lightly build it up until you get the color that you're after. I'm pretty sure there are four shades within this blush range, so definitely recommend checking them out. If you're after a matte blush, the Essence Matte Touch blushes are also really great. So this one here is in the old packaging and the lid has broken, but it's in the shade Peach Me Up. And it's a beautiful shade for fair skin. It has just the right amount of pigment. And as I mentioned, it's a matte formula. And then if you're after a more of a natural looking blush that you can wear with no foundation, I recommend the Savvy Lip and Cheek Color. And this is in the shade Sleek Rose. So this one is a cream formula, which is why I said it can be more of a natural looking blush. It works beautifully on just your bare skin, but it also works really well over the top of foundation and powder. It doesn't lift up the product you have on underneath, which is just 
amazing. Again, not super pigmented, so you can go in with a light hand and build it up. Really creamy, really blendable. I absolutely love it. Next is highlighter, and I wouldn't say that this is an essential in your makeup kit, but oh boy, do I love a good highlighter. I like to go for more of a champagne tone over a gold or a pink, as I find that looks most natural on my skin tone. One of my favorites is actually an eyeshadow by Essence, and this is in the shade Apricotta. Being an eyeshadow, you think it may be a little bit too chunky, but it is a really smooth formula and just leaves that really nice glow on the cheekbones. And if you build it up, it can be quite poppin'. So definitely recommend, and they're only like $4 or something, so affordable. If you're after a cream highlighter, I absolutely love the Flower Beauty Chubby in Pearl Shimmer. Again, this is really good if you don't wear a lot of foundation, you just want more of a natural looking glow. This you can apply with your finger or the bum of your beauty blender and it just melts into the skin and leaves a really beautiful natural glow. And then if you did want to turn it up a notch, add a powder over the top and oh boy. Mm-hmm. You'll thank me for that one. I don't have a lot of recommendations in this category from the drugstore. I do prefer my high-end highlighters, but they're just two that I think are definitely worth it. Next is eyeshadows, and I am actually quite picky when it comes to affordable eyeshadows. You may think it's your skills that suck, but it's actually the eyeshadows, okay? My all-time favorite eyeshadow palette from the drugstore is the Astralis Neutralize Palette. This is full of beautiful warm tones and it's got a lot of mattes and then a few shimmers. So you can create a nice everyday natural look but then glam it up a little with the shimmer shades. The formula of these shadows are the creamiest eyeshadow formula I have ever felt at the drugstore. They blend so easily and have a lot of pigment as well. So you're not sitting there for ages building it up and building it up. You don't have to work hard with these shadows and that is what I love about this palette. And then I have the Designer Brands ICU palettes and these are hidden little gems. The color stories in these palettes are so beautiful. You get six shades to each palette and I'm pretty sure, yeah, they've got four mattes and two shimmers in each palette. The Designer Brands eyeshadow formula is one of the best affordable shadows I have ever tried. Super pigmented, they blend easily and they're just, they're not a hassle. They are really amazing quality and for the price, you can't go wrong. The next product I want to talk about is eyeliner. Now this isn't for everyone, I don't use it every day, but when I need it, I need it. So I think it's a great idea to have two different kind of eyeliners in your collection. One is a pencil eyeliner that you can use in your waterline and your tight line, and the other is a liquid eyeliner. So if you want to do a nice wing or you need to line your lash line before putting on false lashes. My favorite pencil liner is the Rimmel Exaggerate. This comes in a heap of colors from shimmery to matte formulas, and it's really pigmented and creamy. So it glides onto your eyes really easily. And then for a liquid liner, I love the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Wing. This has a nice flexible brush tip. It's a really dark black color, which if you've used a lot of liquid liners, you see the difference between like a dark black and a not so dark black. It's really easy to use and it doesn't dry up in the bottle so it's going to last you a fair amount of time. Next is mascara and adding mascara can just make you feel a million times better. It does for me anyway. So some of my favorites from the drugstore are the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. Actually in Australia it's called the Paradise Ecstatic. This one has a nice big fluffy wand and I love it because it really separates my lashes while giving them a lot of volume and length. Maybelline have a great range of mascaras as well. All different types of wands from rubber thin ones to thick fluffy ones. Whatever kind of mascara wand works best for you, you should be able to find it within the Maybelline range. So I definitely recommend having a look at their mascaras. As for lipsticks, Everyone needs a few lipsticks in their collection, starting off with a nude. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, you should all know what my favorite nude is. Say it with me, Astralis Girl Boss in the shade Empower. This is just the best lipstick. So it's a demi-matte formula, so it does dry down 
but not to a really tight, crusty feeling. It's still really moisturizing, but it's going to stay in place. And then if you do need to reapply over the top after you've eaten, it doesn't feel really thick and cakey on the lips. This range is huge. There are so many colors to choose from. It's a very comfortable formula and it's long lasting. If you're after more of a traditional lipstick bullet, then Astralis also has the Girl Boss range in that style as well. They have matte formulas and satin formulas. Again, the range is humongous. They are really comfortable lipsticks and I definitely recommend them. And then if you're after a matte liquid lipstick, I recommend the Maybelline Superstay Matte Ink. Again, this has a really beautiful shade range. They are a comfortable liquid matte lipstick, which doesn't happen very often. It's a nice thin formula, so it doesn't feel too heavy on the lips and it doesn't get that crusty feeling, which, ooh gross. Now after you've done all this hard work, you want to set your makeup in place. So a setting spray I love for keeping my makeup in place all day is the Rimmel Insta Fix and Go. This has been a favorite of mine for a long time now. It has a really nice cucumber scent. It feels really refreshing on the skin. It settles all those powders in and it keeps your makeup in place. You can also use it to wet your eyeshadows if you want the shimmer to just really pop. Get a little bit on your brush, spray it, and then apply. It'll look great. And then a new spray to my collection that I have been obsessed with is the L'Oreal Shake and Glow. The mister on this bottle is just... Let me give you a demo. Oh, get it on my face. Did you see how soft that was? Ooh, so satisfying. But this formula just leaves a beautiful glow to the skin. It's not going to leave you looking too oily. It just gives that really nice sheen to the skin and it really makes your highlighter pop. Quickly, I want to mention some affordable brushes. The Real Techniques range would definitely have to be my favorite. They can be a little bit expensive, so I like to buy them off of iHerb.com or they are usually included in the Priceline half price cosmetic sales. So I would wait till then to pick them up, but they are amazing quality brushes. They are synthetic bristles, super long lasting. I've had some in my collection for at least six years now, I would say, and they are still going strong. All right, well, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching and found this video helpful. As I mentioned, I will link any related videos and reviews down below. And if you have any other questions, make sure you leave me a comment because I would love to have a chat about it. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. And if you aren't already, come and follow me on Instagram. The link will be down below. I hope you're excited for this Back to Basics series. I'm definitely excited to share with you the things that I've learned throughout the years. As I said, I am in no way an expert. I haven't done any makeup courses. I'm not a makeup artist. This is just from one makeup lover to another. There is just so much out there these days. It can be quite overwhelming. So I just want to go back to basics and help you figure it all out. All right. Well, I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Great. How long was that lipstick on my teeth? <laughs> depending on your skin type, they can perform differently. Next is foundation. And depending on your skin type, they can perform differently. Why do I keep saying that? Next is foundation. And depending on your skin type, they can perform differently. Well...